Hello everyone, my name is Nikola Nestorovic, I'm a chess grandmaster from Serbia and a FIDE coach. <laughs> so uh, welcome to my channel, I hope you will enjoy the content. I will post, I hopefully I will post this regularly. And today we'll take a look again into the similar uh, subject like we did in the previous example. That's what we do is like a calculations. So different type of calculations. So uh, let's take a look here and I will start this example with the, let's say the simplest one. And we will go next, let's say to the next level with uh, each example as well. Uh, let's say when I explain what's, what's going on, I will ask you to stop the video. So here this will, will do like a little um, uh, course. So you need to think about how to solve the example and you will see the, you know, the moment where you need to stop the video and try to find the solution. So you can, in the commentary, you can tell me how many examples you solved in the end. So let's take a look. And as you can see here, this is the first position of the board and white is playing for the win. So here, again, very interesting, uh, let's say position, a lot of pieces for white attacking the black king, who is like a, in the edge of the board. So please stop the video here and try to find the best move for white. Thank you so much. Here, this example, it's kind of like in a one move idea. And here, the best move for white is to play a move queen to c5. So that move is kind of like a critical one. After the move queen c5 here, the problem for black is that black can't take the queen and not so many options. Of course, if black takes, let's say, bishop to c5, there is just a rook to d8 check. And obviously, it's a check on the king. And after he goes there... Now rook to g8, king can take because knight is defending the rook. So when we have this position after the move queen to c5, the main problem is that white king is pretty safe and this bishop, <laughs> it's a very hard to do anything else except to take the queen because also this we can see there are so many different uh, threats. Here what I need to say is this move is not good. So move knight h7 is not working because that black has like bishop to g1 check. Very importantly always we need to see the threats of <laughs> let's say our opponent. The problem is after king h1 bishop f2 and black saved the game that uh, draw. So in this example here queen c5 very important well, let's say a very important first move. And from here, everything is um, pretty easy. Thank you so much. Let's go for the second one. Welcome to chapter two, or we can see example number two. In this position here, white is playing for the win. But again, as you can see here, white pieces are very active, but white needs to find the right way how to maximize this advantage. So here again, please stop the clock and try to find a way for white, how white should play this, let's say this position for a win. And I will give you a little hint. So black king, it's kind of like in danger here. Thank you. And let's go to work. Thank you so much. I hope you had enough time. In this position on the board, the key move for white is to play a first move rook to c6. So why this move is so important and so key one. In the position after rook t6, nothing else obviously for black to do except to take the rook with the pawn. And after this knight disappears from t6, there is this beautiful idea, queen to d4. <laughs> What's going on now? After the queen to d4, there is like a beautiful battery over this a1 aj diagonal. And after queen to d4, the problem is that black can't stop the checkmate on the h8 square. So first, what, what we need to do here is that f6, it's not possible because bishop is spinning the king. And of course, if black just takes, let's say, rook d5 or something like this, there is a queen to h8 checkmate. So after the move rook t6, the problem is again, there is no useful move, but because also with the rook t6 sacrifice, the black queen is under attack. So after the bt6, queen to d4. So how to solve this kind of um, examples? So here, you know, you're just thinking to yourself, okay, ooh, how beautiful it will be if I can put the queen on d4 you know, or e5 to improve this stuff. And then you're saying, oh, okay, rook to 6 is pretty convenient. And after rook to 6, bt6, just queen d4 and black resigning because queen h8 is coming. Thank you so much. Let's go for example number three. 
So <clears throat> welcome to chapter three today. So now black is on the move. And here I will say that this example is different from previous two. Now black is on the move and black needs to think, okay, is this knight on e4 possible to take? So if black can take this knight on e4, <laughs> yes or no? So now it's a question. Uh, again, please stop the video here and try to find, let's say, the best variation for black, how black should play this position uh, for a win. So please stop the, <laughs> stop the video and try to find the best move and let's go. Thank you so much. So here the answer uh, on the question is this knight uh, can be taken or not? The answer is yes, you should take this knight. But again, how you need to calculate this kind of a situation is you immediately need to find a way how white will reply on this. So after the move bishop to e4, now the key question for white here is that there is nothing else to do except to pin the bishop with, with the rook. So rook to e1 pinning the king and now this is the reason why i said like try please try to calculate here after the move rookie one there is like a first beautiful move it's a bishop move but this bishop on f6 so bishop to g5 check obviously in this spot here uh, like let's go one by one but bishop g5 is a pretty pretty good stuff and after the move bishop to g5 white should of course only free square is to d1 and after the move king to d1, black can simply play a move castle. Beautiful move. So white is black, sorry, black is not castling, attacking the bishop here. So even if he takes rook e4, black has another target. That's a bishop on f1. And as you can see here, black is a piece up. And that's a pretty, pretty easy stuff. So from here, this knight actually must be taking. If black doesn't take the knight, the position will be kind of like equal. But with bishop e4, very important move is this in-between check, bishop to g5, because there is only one square for the king. But after the castle, this bishop is kind of like defended by counterattack on the bishop to f1. I hope you enjoy these examples and let's take a look at the last one. <laughs> So I can say that um, today we would practice with, we had like, I gradually improved uh, the strength of all of these examples. Let's say that this one is the most uh, difficult one. So here, white is playing for the win for a, let's say kind of like a little more help for you. It's a checkmate pattern. We need to find a checkmate on the black king, but for that you need a, let's say a lot of very precise moves, a uh, couple of them in a row. So let's take a look here again, please stop the video and try to find a way how white will launch a very, very dangerous attack on the black king. Thank you so much. I hope you had enough time. Uh, in this position on the board, the first move, let's say the crucial move, is rook to d7. After the move rook to d7, white destroyed a very important defensive piece of black, and that was this knight on to d7. So now, there are like a two different ways how black can take the rook, but both ways are not good. So first, if black takes queen to d7, now the next move that's coming is knight to f6 check. So this is a double attack on the king and on the queen. So obviously if the king moves, uh, like we can just take the, you know, queen for free. So here, let's say the way is g to f6. No, no good for way for black, but let's try the one of them. And after the g f6, queen g4 check. And obviously if king moves, Bishop will take on f6, but also if this bishop, let's say, come to save the king, after the move bishop to f6, there is no escape from the queen to g7, because obviously king, bishop can't take the bishop because the black king is pinned on the g file. So let's say, let's be maximum correct, and the queen to g7 checkmate. So in this position, uh, let's say after the move rook to d7, rook d7 is a crucial move, that, that move must come. And after the rook d7, there is a, let's say bishop to d7, but again, there is a knight to f6 check. And okay, so here there is a little, let's say kind of like a way for black to a little bit defend this position a little bit longer. So not to take the knight, because if we said if, he, if black takes, there is this idea with queen g4, and bishop to f6, just destroying the black king. So here in this spot, black also can move the king to h8, but after that happened, queen is going to h5. 
5. Again, this, let's say, this knight can be taken because of the similar ideas. So now, after this plan here, he needs to play a move h6 to let's kind of like a try to defend, but now queen to f7. Just a beautiful move. Now, after queen f7, white is also trying to give this checkmate, checkmate on to square g8, but after this, if he takes, obviously, again, we have bishop to d6, but I, w I like the most here, the move bishop to d6, and now queen to g6. Just a beautiful, and now after queen g6, again, checkmate here, and if he takes, we just take with the uh, bishop. So I will say this kind of like this was the most difficult one because you need to start with the one sacrifice, rook for the knight, and it's never easy to give up the rook for the knight. But here, after this first sacrifice, especially if he takes with the bishop, you need to sacrifice again the second knight. Let's say not the second knight, but the second piece. And after the knight to f6 here, everything goes pretty, let's say, pretty straightforward because in this kind of a position, black can defend. As you can see here, we have one, two, three pieces on the white side and just, let's say, one bishop that's kind of like defending the king. So that's a never, never good. So let's finish this one with this checkmate pattern here. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of examples. I hope it will, I help you at least a little bit to improve your calculations. And I hope I help you to learn how to calculate in the right way. If you enjoyed uh, uh, this lesson, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the channel and please comment and uh, tell me how many examples did you solve on your own. So I hope you will have a nice time and I hope this channel will grow. So I really want to help you to uh, improve your chess in the best possible way. So thank you so much and I hope to see you in the next one.